Hey, it's Jay, and today I'm going to be sharing with you the books that I'm going to bring to college with me this next year. Um, so as most of you know, I do go to college away from home. I live about um, 200 miles from the college I go to, and so I do stay in a dorm through the year. Um, my cat just jumped off my bed because I started talking to nobody and she's wondering what's going on. Um, but I do have about 30 books I'm going to be bringing, which is six times as many as I brought with me last year. Um, but um, I am getting more into my degree and I am going to be trying to read, be reading more um, in my free time than I can. Alicia, say hi to the- She smells my makeup. And I do have about six different categories, I guess, of books that I'm bringing. Um, and I'm just going to be sharing with you those that I'm going to be bringing. The first category I'm going to be bringing out, nails, 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 is um, short story collections or essay collections. I am bringing Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay with me. This is a series of essays. Um, I had this with me second semester last year because I got her to sign it when she visited my school um, and I'm about halfway done with it and I really should finish it um, and I think I thought this year would be a good year to finish this. <laughs> the first of two short story collections I'm bringing are One More Time Stories and Other Stories by BJ Novak. He plays Ryan in The Office. Um, I am taking a fiction technique class this semester and um, I thought it would be beneficial for me to read like shorter stories um, if like I need inspiration for writing um, a short fic um, I could write, read like a six page story from his collection. I'm also going to be bringing a book um, with selected stories from O. Henry. Um, my mom recommended that I read O. Henry and he um, is like really well known for his short fiction. I thought I would bring him or bring his book um, sorry, here, get my eye. And I thought I would bring a book with some of his fiction, um, just so I can get kind of like a taste of the older short stories, I guess. What are you doing, you weirdo? I love you. The second category I'm bringing is I'm going to bring a few classics. Now, this one was on my summer TBR, and I unfortunately, <laughs> um, didn't get around to reading it. Um, and that is Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. Um, yeah. I meant to read this over the summer, but I just had other things- sorry, cat firm. I had other things going on, and so I wasn't able to read it. Um, and since it was made into a movie, and since the theater on campus will probably be showing it at some point again, I should read it beforehand, because I really want to do that for this one. What you doing? The second classic I'm bringing is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I've been meaning to read this since like summer before 12th grade and that was two summers ago and I haven't gotten around to it yet and I know that this deals with depression since Sylvia Plath herself had depression and I really want to um, see how she does that. Alicia, calm down. Yeah? You gonna calm? You gonna calm down? <laughs> Come here, football kitty. Her tail's wagging. She wants to be let down. <laughs> Little puppy. Okay, okay, okay. Be free. Don't go crying to mom and dad that my door's closed. Every time I come in here, or I, every time I film on my bedroom and I close the door to kind of give myself some privacy, Alicia complains to my mom and dad that she is between that there's a door between me and her even though she chooses to leave my bedroom so the next category of books i'm going to be bringing this year are um like historical fictions slash retellings slash historical retellings um and there's five if i'm counting correctly the first one is the gentleman's guide to vice and virtue by Mackenzie lee i know that this is a really popular um book with a bisexual main character and I know that in, okay, let me get this right. The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy. Um, yeah, it's coming out soon. That um, are currently being distributed. That um, 
Felicity, I think her name is, is Arrow Ace, and I really want to read that, but I know I should read this first, and I've been meaning to, but I haven't gotten around to it. I should have read it during Pride. There are a lot of books I should have read during Pride, but I'm getting to this. This is probably going to be the first one I read um, this next semester. The next one is one I should really have been have read by now because it is one of my favorite um, writers, um, like young writer like me, um, booktuber, author, tuber, um, one of her favorite books, um, Shaylin at Shaylin Bishop, or Shaylin Bishop at Shaylin Writes. I'll put her channel down below, and that is The Book Thief by Marcus Lessig. I know this is so popular. I know that the movie was really good too, and I need to get around to reading this. But historical fiction hasn't like ever been my thing but suddenly I have like a whole bunch of historical fiction books I need to read that I actually want to read. The next one I'm gonna bring I'm so excited about it is Fox by Nadine Brands or Brandis and this is a historical retelling of the gunpowder plot. It's fiction, YA, um, historical fiction and it follows this boy named Thomas who I think um, Guy Fox's nephew or something. Um, he gets, there's like this stone plague or clay plague or something and he has to um, break the curse or something by helping Guy Fox blow up parliament and it's just, I love the gunpowder plot. I don't know why. I blame Doctor Who's video game. The next one is And I Darken by Kirsten White. I just watched um, a few weeks ago Jesse at Jesse the Reader's um, a book haul and unboxing of his and he was rambling for like three minutes about how good this trilogy was especially the second book and I just got the first book a few um about two months ago and I have never read anything by Kirsten right Kirsten White um but it's fan a fantasy historical retelling of Vlad the Impaler I think and again historical fantasy I don't know what's happening but I'm excited to read it. <gasps> I just bit the page. <laughs> I just bit a page in the book. It was the very last page. It was the page with like the author bio, but still I feel so bad. The next one is Girl in the Blue Coat by Monica Hesse. Um, I love this cover and I know it takes place during World War II and, and the main character is, has to like, navigate um, Nazi Germany um, selling wanted goods on the black market or something and it sounds really interesting and I just I don't know what's happening with me in historical fiction but <laughs> the fourth category of books I am bringing oh no um, is adult slash new adult fiction um, which I'm just stepping my toe into um, and the first one which I'm bringing partly because I know it's really popular and that the author's really um, had a lot of good feedback. It's A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. Yeah, V.E. Schwab. Um, and I think I want to say this is historical. Yeah, George III, Great London. I don't know. I, my history is weak right now. I don't know if George III's, like, actually a historical figure or if that was, like, a made-up character. Um, but I, it's, please. <laughs> a Darker Shade of Magic. Everyone knows that. Everyone loves this. this. Next one is 180 Seconds by Jessica Park. This is a new adult novel about a third year college student who um, has, um, as a child and teenager, always bounced around from foster home to foster home and therefore she doesn't really um, let herself get close to people in relationships. And there's the social experiment she joins one day where you have three minutes to make a connection with someone and she and this boy um, do make a connection and she has to navigate those unknown waters. And the last new adult book I'm bringing is By Your Side by Casey West. This is about um, this boy and girl who get locked in the library for a weekend and no one can come and help them because no one knows they're in there and they have to survive on um, food from the vending machines and they have to deal with each other um, and they are complete opposites and this sounds really chaotic, um, kind of cliche but kind of cute at the same time. The fifth category of books I'm bringing are more like um, nonfiction writing books. I think most of them are Writer's Digest books. Oh, I'm also bringing my collection of Writer's Digest magazines. I have like 25 that I'm bringing. Um, I'm not going to like include them in this but because I would paper cut myself a whole bunch. But just know that there's like 25 Writer's Digest magazines I'm bringing with me. 
Anyway, the first book um, I'm bringing is Writing the Fiction Series, um, The Complete Guide for Novels and Novellas by Karen S. Weisner. Um, I am currently working on my YA fantasy series. I'm trying to outline the whole thing, and I'm also outline. I'm trying to outline the whole thing, and I'm also currently rewriting the first book in that series. Um, and I thought that I could skim through this occasionally and uh, get some hints and tips on those are synonyms on um, how to create a coherent um, and a co coherent series that is good with continuity and stuff because I sometimes have issues with that. Next one is how to write a book proposal um, by Joy Jody Ryan and Michael Larson. I won't be needing this for a while, but I'm hoping by second semester I will start to kind of needed this book's guidance. The third um, write, writing related book I'm bringing is Grammar Snobs or Great Big Meanies by June Casagrande. Um, this is kind of like the only grammar book you'll ever need except it's um, the voice is more colloquial, it's more fun, it's easier to get through. Um, and so I, this book will be replacing the only grammar book you ever need for me this semester, this next year. The next one is Social Media for Writers by T. Morris and Pip Ballantine. Um, I am pretty familiar with Tumblr, um, and even though I'm Gen Z, I'm not too familiar with Twitter or Instagram, um, and I'm getting familiar with YouTube, um, and there's like a few other platforms in here where I could use some hints on, so I'm going to be doing that. You can see I've already bookmarked a few places with some idolic, um, sticky notes. And the last writing related book I'm bringing is a big honker with like 500 pages. And that is the complete handbook of novel writing, everything you just know to create and sell your work. Um, it includes interviews and articles by various um, popular writers such as George R. R. Martin, Jojo Moyes, um, Orson Scott Card, etc, etc. I am already sort of getting through it. I'm on page like 50 probably 46 that was close and I have bookmarked a few um really good pieces of advice that I found helpful I'm going to be bringing this and just try and chug through it as often as I can I guess and the last category is just YA contemporary this is the or like YA contemporary slash dystopian slash fantasy. The first book is Sarah Bernard's novel, A Quiet Kind of Thunder. This is a romance novel uh, with, I believe, a deaf character and a mute character. And I don't know a lot about this, but it seems really cute and adorable. And I um, haven't really read any books with a deaf or mute character. And so I'm really looking forward to this read. The next book is Jenny Han's To All the Boys I Loved Before. I, um, again, this is romance. And I'm not that big of a romance reader, but because Netflix um, is releasing their adaptation um, film um, soon, um, or if they already have it at the time this up I've uploaded this, I'm not sure. Um, and so I thought I should read this before I watch the film. Um, and I've heard that this is really good and I like the premise, so. The next one is Three Dark Clown Clowns, Three Dark Clowns. That'd be freaking terrifying. Like, think of how many Pennywises there would have to be. The next one is Three Dark Crowns by Kendare Blake. Kendare Blake. <laughs> um, this is about three sisters, I believe they're triplets, that have different powers and they have to basically prove who is meant to be the ruler in their kingdom and they have to go through different trials and tribulations and um, I guess the court or something will decide who is meant to be the true heir of the throne. I'm really looking forward to this next one and that is Dorothy Must Die by Danielle Page. Um, I believe I believe that the series is complete and that there's now like little companions um, that are being released but I really love this premise. It's basically it's a kind of a retelling of um, Wizard of Oz except for the main character has to go to Oz and she has to kill Dorothy and the Scarecrow. Um, Ten Man and Cowardly Lion because they are bad guys and that just sounds so awesome. This next one I have been wanting to get for a while and I did a few months ago. That is Seven Ways We Lie by Riley Redgate. Um, I, again, I don't really know a lot about this. I just know that it seems really cute and interesting. Um, it's like there's some kind of scandal with a teacher-student affair and 
Um, everyone starts blaming each other, and there are seven unlikely allies um, who all represent one of the seven deadly sins, and it just sounds so cool. I'm not giving it justice, but it's... <sighs> The next one talks about mental illness, which I want to read more books about and kind of see which ones um, portray it correctly. And that is The Program by Suzanne Young. I believe this is a four or five book series and I think it's about to be wrapped up if it isn't already. Um, basically it's this couple who is um, entered into this program um, that um, makes them get over their depression really quickly or something. and. Like, I know if you show um, any signs of being sad or depressed, then you get punished. And the author of this actually visited my high school, my last year of high school, and um, I didn't have the book at the time, so I wasn't able to get her to sign it. But because this deals with mental illness um, and it's really popular, I thought I'd give it a read. This next one, um, the author has the same birthday as me. She's just like 11 years older than me, I believe. Um, that is Sarah J. Mass's Throne of Glass. I got this in Oregon, um, when I was 15, I think. I got this, um, from, ha from House. I got this from Pals, and I haven't read it yet, and I, one of my best friends, um, Calypso, really liked this series, or at least this, the first book, and, um, it's about this female assassin, and I haven't really read any books with assassins, but that sounds awesome, so... The third to last book is Adam Severa's History is All You Left Me. Um, as I have mentioned several times before, I loved his book. They both die at the end. I cried so many times. I did a review on it. Um, and I got this for a pretty good price and I thought I would read it in just like one night, hopefully if my roommate's gone. I don't know. I haven't met her yet. Um, if she's like out, then I can just have like a good cry. The penultimate one I'm bringing is Becky Albertalli's The Upside of Unrequited. Um, I know this is about um, Simon's friend Abby Suso's cousins, I believe, in Washington, D.C. Um, I believe they're twins. One of them has not had any boyfriends. She's had a lot of crushes, but she's never pursued any of them. And I loved um, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, and so I'm hoping that this book is just as good. The very last book, I think number 30 that I'm bringing, is Never Always Sometimes by Addie Alsed. This is um, YA and it's basically, <clears throat> am I dying? These two best friends, um, one boy and one girl, who said that they would never be the stereoclip stereotypical high school students. They even made a list for things they would always do, things they would never do, and sometimes some things they would sometimes do. Um, and I don't know, that just like little idea, that little um bond and uh pact that they made sounds really cute and i'm really looking forward to reading this like it's just gushy and like, fluffy and i need that right now so that is all the books that i'm bringing to school with me this year um i do come back um during winter break for about three weeks and so i'll probably bring some of them home with me i'm not sure how many but i will be hopefully bringing at least a fourth of them back and I'll probably be bringing some of the other books behind me which you can't really see um, back with me to school to restock um, or not we'll see how things go so if you liked all the books I'm bringing and you support my crazy goals then hit thumbs up I upload every Saturday and usually Wednesdays but not always because I'm a college student and I am a writing student so and down below in the description are the different links to my social medias. And that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.